Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends a uh, very good morning good afternoon good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe and at whatever time you are listening to this series of lectures and seeing it as you know my good name is raghunandan sengupta from the ime department at iit kanpur in india and the course which we are discussing here is under the swam lecture series and the title of the course is investment analysis and portfolio management Today is the 13th lecture and if you uh, do remember for the last 2 to 3 lectures we are discussing that how we can consider the returns capital R or small r depending on how we have been able to define it, how we can use the returns considering the uh, concept of single index model is true all the assumptions uh, I did discuss in uh, brief uh, both for the single index as well as the multi index model and as I was discussing that I did try to bring a one to one semblance with the simple linear regression model which is used in statistics and multiple linear regression model. Then we switched on to the concepts that how using the concept of excess return divided by risk, where risk can take different connotation whether it is standard deviation or beta. We saw that under the consideration when short selling is allowed, not allowed and when you consider the, the concept of risk free lending borrowing being there and for short selling being allowed using the Lintner's definition how you can formulate the portfolio for all these 3 cases. When we were discussing about the CAPM models for the single index model, I did mention that we will come to the CAPM model and today's lecture uh, would be under the portfolio theory, would consider the corresponding detail um, discussion about CAPM model which is capital asset pricing model assumption under CAPM, the capital market or the pricing line we will consider uh, the security market line what is the concept of Jensen's index, Sharpe index, the risk adjusted interest rate, the con linearity concept of pricing, certainty equivalent and all these things. I did mention this, this lecture description in, in the 12th one uh, considering that we will be covering uh, all those points, but uh, considering the one hour we have for each lecture and considering the uh, all the points which come up during uh, my lectures, we may not be able to cover till the end, but we will definitely keep that in mind and cover that in the next lecture. Even though our, our overall aim is quite um, in depth, but considering that we go step by step discuss the concepts we slowly cover them may not be in the same class. So, please bear with that. So, what is the capital asset pricing model? So, if you remember uh, the single index model what the idea was that you had the market, market movements basically gave us the best prediction about the price movement and the returns for that particular index can be calculated accordingly. So, the capital asset pricing model is basically more uh, practical view of the um, statistical model and how we can implement it. So, in the capital asset pricing model, so you want to basically find out the pricing uh, considering the market movement, market index movements are there. So, under CAPAM we are mainly concerned with two important problems. One is to determine the best course of action in the investment process that is how to devise and make the portfolio. So, our idea is to basically formulate a portfolio uh, considering of n number of stocks and whether this portfolio considering the investment which we have done, 
whether they do meet the criteria of risk return for the investor or the decision maker. And also we want to de determine or get some information from CAPAM model to, uh, to determine the correct arbitrage free or fair or equilibrium price for the asset of the security and this is what our main concern is. So, obviously we have considered and I am concentrating more on the second bullet point which I just marked here in red. So, we know capital R i bar considering the average is given by this model. Now, the main concern is well we know the formula, but this arbit free arbitrage free or fair equilibrium price which we will calculate based on which these returns can be found out whether it is right or wrong, whether it is really giving us the best possible information depending on the demand and supply of that particular financial good. Because be based on the demand and supply we will be able to find out whether the price really gives us all the information. In answering the second question which we just discussed, uh, CAPM model was developed by Sharp, Lintner and Gosin and uh, without going into the detailed theoretical background, I will just come back to its main important point and see how the two questions which we have put up for ourselves can be answered accordingly considering the simple CAPM model and the assumptions. So, obviously, when we consider the CAPAM model, there will be assumptions and some of the assumptions may be theoretical, some of the assumptions are very practical, but they would be utilized if you remember when we are considering the mathematical, the single index model from the mathematical sense, I did mention the assumptions and we saw that they did make um, sense when we consider the simple linear regression or the multiple linear regression and the multiple linear regression being the case when we had the multi index model. So, what are the assumptions here? The first one is that there is no transaction cost. So, buying and selling a particular asset does not entail any cost. So, the price which we pay to buy and sell is basically S which is the end of the day closing price based on which we find out the return. We also consider the fact that assets are infinitely divisible in the sense I may buy and sell the least number of asset or max buy and sell the maximum number of asset which is applicable in the sense I can buy and sell one asset, I can buy and sell two asset. 3, 4, so on and so forth. So, that means there is no bar on how many assets I sell or buy. So, any investor who is there. We will also consider as per the assumption there is no personal tax. So, the tax component which is there because that would have an effect on the overall income. And if you remember for the model we are considering, the, that considering uh, model in the initial stages was basically to maximize the return. So, in when you are trying to maximize the return, we did not consider taxes to be there. So, we will also consider the fourth point it mentions the investor's transaction cannot affect the price of the asset in the sense that there is there are infinite number of buyers and sellers, demand and supply are happening in such a way that any particular investor buying and selling a huge number of uh, particular asset would not change the price. So, there is no single investor there who can dictate the price. Every, every all information based on which buying and selling is done is exactly applicable and available to all the investors. Investors basically make the decision whatever their their criteria is, but the main criteria for both of them for, for all the investors sorry not for both of them for all the investors is basically return and risk. So, what my return is and what uh, the other person's return is that 
value may be different, but we are only concentrating that everybody will make his or her decision based on a return which is r or small r and the sigma component or beta. So, we will we'll concentrate more on the sigma which is the risk and these if you remember sorry these they are based on ln of S 2 by S 1 and this return is used to find out the sigma. So, generally when we whenever we write sigma it is basically the sigma of the return. The sixth one is that unlimited short selling is allowed that means, I can short sell any particular um, uh, script to any quantum. So, buying and selling as I had said I can buy and sell any number of asset which basically the, the other extreme is that can buy and sell short sell any number of asset to any quantum. Here we will consider unlimited riskless lending and is borrowing as an allowed <coughs> even though it is true that we did discuss this concept in the sense that riskless lending and riskless borrowing would be different, but we will consider both of them are same and I can utilize that value to consider the bank. I can deposit in the bank infinite amount, I can withdraw from the bank infinite amount and when I am withdrawing the from bank, uh, amount from the bank, I am utilizing that to buy the other put some investment in that n number of risky assets. The eighth one being investors define relevant period in exactly the same manner. So, that means, if I am trying to find out the risk return based on a weekly, monthly, yearly, quarterly basis. So, the time frame I can buy and sell later on that is a different question, but whenever I am making a decision the set of information for the time frame what I am using would be relevant for the other person also other person and other investor. The investors have identical expectation with respect to the necessary inputs for the portfolio decision. So, whenever I am making a decision I means any arbitrary decision maker investor. So, based if you remember one of the point in the last slide was everybody wants to make the decision based on the risk and return. So, if we basically extend that they have they means investors have identical expectation with respect to the necessary inputs that is the price that is the information based on which he or she is making uh, the decision. So, that set of inputs is equally available and are I, uh, and all our investing investors expectations are, are how we analyze it and get the answer that is a different question, but our expectation from the information is same. We will also consider all assets are marketable that means, whatever the, the asset is it can be bought and sold by any person in any quantum that means, there would be not be any ceiling based on some assumptions that they would be only very niche buyers and sellers or for a particular stock depending that uh, there are special offerings for the particular assets. So, it means it means all the infinite number of buyers and sellers can buy and sell any particular stock. Now, if we remember for the one fund theorem which we considered as Q, one fund theorem means when we have considered these n risky assets and then we had considered the one which is the risk free interest rate based on that we formulated a portfolio of n plus 1 and that one point q which you had uh, which joined f and based on the fact that the straight line was basically now the efficient frontier considering short selling not there. For the one fund theorem which we had studied a natural question would arise which everybody would like to know is 
what is that q which everybody wants to purchase and sell because q we will consider to be a such a portfolio a basket of goods that everybody would like to have a pie a piece of that pie because <clears throat> that will ensure that whatever my risk return is i can formulate my portfolio by buying and selling some amount of that port value q and considering that q can be infinitely divisible into smaller parts so that fund which we want to find out based on which q uh, can be visualized formulated is basically the market index market index this is that value of m for which if you remember we are already always concentrating our r suffix m so that fund is basically the market index that is the fund that contains share or every stock in proportions to the stock representation in the entire market so if you consider bsc if you consider nsc or any other stock cacs dax and cac dax then uh, new york stock exchange nyse futsi nikki and seng so we assume that in the index which is a conglomeration of asset basically mimics the market to the best possible extent so if i am able to buy a small chunk of that which means i will follow the market and i would be able to invest in the market in some proportions depending on the total amount of money which you have so or else if we if we can formulate a portfolio which is exactly replicates the market which means if i am able to do that for my own that particular portfolio will also follow the market to the minutest possible detail movement so actually the investor wants that because whether the market is going up or going down that particular portfolio will mimic that such that i am i i am able to get the possible gains and also sustain the losses based on the demand and supply of all the investors so here let me continue reading it that fund is the market index that is the fund that contains shares of every stock in proportion to the stock's representation in the entire market an asset weight assets weight is defined as a proportion of portfolio capital that is allocated to that asset so consider this if i have we have been talking about w always so actually w would be like this so consider i have the end of the day of price of that particular index consider the market is s1 to sn capital n and the total number of such asset, uh, assets in that portfolio is basically n1 small n1 to small n suffix n so if i consider the total amount of investment total investment ti that will be equal to n1 at at any point of time will be n1 into s1 plus nn into sn which is basically summation of ni si so if i am considering the weights technically weight w i will be actually ni si divided by summation of ni into si so this is what actually we do mean by the weights so obviously if you see n being all integers and when you solve it it will become not a simple linear programming you have to use um, integer programming and so on and so forth plus the fact that prices uh, based on which we calculate have a distribution which is not normal it is log normal distribution if you remember i did mention that but if i replace that with the w's and they being from 0 to 1 continuous so hence we have been utilizing the simple concept of linear regression and linear formulation simple concept of um, this linear programming simplex method so in the hence the weights of the asset in the in, in the market portfolio that means the market or technically we mean q 
or say for example M. Hence the weight of the asset in the market portfolio is equal to the proportion of that asset's total capital value to the total market value which is which I just read, wrote down which is basically Ni into Si divided by summation of Ni into Si. So, this basically is W. This weight is called the market capitalization weight and is denoted by W i as we have already seen and dealt with that earlier. Now comes the capital market concept of capital market pricing line. So, what does it show? It shows the relationship between the expected rate of return and the risk. Expected rate of return is basically R i bar with respect to the risk, risk can be the sigma or beta and we will consider that in the diagram. So, thus as risk increases, so obviously that has to be compensated with the corresponding increase in the return. So, it is mentioned here that as risk increases, so does the expected return because there cannot be no any free lunch in the sense if I consider return is increasing and without having an effect on risk, so that is not possible. So, they will go hand in hand. So, in the same way risk increases, return increases, risk decreases, return decreases and also the case when return increases, risk will also increase. Which is important for you for the investor that will be applicable based on how you want to formulate your portfolio. Mathematically, we can define this as a simple linear regression model which we have already done in the sense that we have considered that R i is equal to alpha i into beta into R m and if I extend that model and if we remember the concepts of the betas were considered using the covariances between the stock and the market, then the individual uh, variables sigma i, sigma m and all these things. So, hence the model can be, we have already written the, the parts, but the general model would be this, which is simple regression model which I have just highlighted in using yellow color. So, here you have R bar P efficient, this is the efficient portfolio. P means the portfolio, if it is a market, it is also a portfolio, if it is a portfolio which you have formed for yourself, also in that case it is a portfolio, hence we are denoting it with value P is equal to R f, because if I find, if I take R f to the left hand side, it is excess return which we are discussing. So, this would be given as R p minus R f. So, I take R f to the right hand side is equal to the excess return of the market divided by the standard deviation of the market multiplied by the efficient portfolios risk. Now, what we are considering is very simply this and if you see the formula, you immediately it will make sense to you. I am, I am going to write the formula only based on whatever I have highlighted. If you consider the terms in, in the left hand side, which is R p minus R f. So, let me write it here. R p bar minus R f is the excess return of the portfolio divided by the risk, which is sigma p. So, I have taken care of the terms which I have just put a <coughs> tick mark here that will be equal to the excess return of the market divided by the risk of the market which means they go hand in hand corresponding to the fact that the risk and return for the efficient uh, portfolio would be, uh, would be exactly equal to in the ratios as written here that means excess return of, of the portfolio which you want to formulate if it is exactly equal to the ratio of the excess return of that portfolio divided by its standard deviation 
and if it matches the excess return on the market divided by the market standard deviation it means that portfolio is exactly mimicking the market portfolio or the market index. So, our aim would be that if this RM is the BSC or the NSC or if you are in the foreign market CAC or DAX or Hansen, uh, Nikkei, FTSE whatever, I will try to basically formulate a portfolio of that of a conglomeration of um, uh, those assets. What is the assets? I am going to come to that later such that the excess return of the portfolio which I have formulated for myself divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio should be exactly equal. So, they would be moving in tandem. Now, the question would be is it possible to formulate a portfolio in such a way that it mimics the market? Technically, yes, provided we formulate a portfolio in, in proportions where the proportions of the scripts which are there in the market are being followed by me. So, I buy small chunks, I am using in a very um, uh, layman sense in order to explain that I buy small chunks of that particular um, uh, scripts which are there in the market and I buy them in the same proportions as they are in the market. In that case, the por portfolio which I formulate would exactly mimic the market. So, if the market say for example, over proportions of um, ONGC is say for example, 20 percent. So, in my portfolio also whatever the amount I am investing should be done in such a way that I also invest 20 percent of that in the ONGC stock and formulate it accordingly. The slope of this capital market or pricing line is basically the price of risk. So, where is that slope coming? So, if I basically have in, in when if you see this equation is a straight line y is equal to mx plus c. So, if I formulate let me draw the arbitrary x and y axis if basically I have r p here and I have the standard deviation sigma p here. So, if this line is drawn here you will have some R f. So, this R f immediately it will ring a bell the moment you see that it has something to do with like alpha here and that slope is basically. So, there are obviously many points here the best fit line which I am formulating is such that tan of this theta is equal to this. Because in that case, I would have basically a value of Q, which is actually is the market which I am aiming at. So, what I would have is the height by base. So, let me use a different color. This height, what is this height? This height is RQ minus RF, which is exactly here because M and Q I am considering to be the same. And what is the base? base is basically the the risk for q which is qm which is here. So, the market capital market or the pricing line would be drawn in such a way that the price of the risk would be given by the slope. This is what is which I have drawn I drew that in order to basically uh, make a logical uh, conclusion for the particular slide last slide 12th one where I was discussing the theory I thought I should uh, draw the diagram also, but it is here drawn here also. So, it would definitely make better sense. So, you have these are even though I have written sig q sigma p there it is basically sigma and that p value would be the portfolio. So, anything this is r bar which is r bar p this is f and actually if I have been able to so consider this is m market or q. So, actually if I were to able draw the line let me use a different color. If I were able to draw the line it will be like this. So, this is the minimum variance point even though we have discussed minimum variance point long time back, but I thought I will just highlight this is the minimum variance point. This is the value of q which you had and the line 
R to M, R to Q, uh, so the F to M or F to Q is basically the line which considers the short selling not been there and the efficient frontier when you have n number of risky assets in Q and one n plus 1 being the F. And if I extend that obviously, it has not been shown dotted. So, the, the portion which is here is basically the same concept of the efficient frontier, but now with short selling being there between Q and F. So, this is the market line and as I have mentioned without going to much details, I will just draw it. So, if I consider this triangle, this height is R bar Q minus R F and this base is basically sigma Q. So, if you have seen this ratio would be the tan of this angle and this obviously, we have seen when in the model you are trying to draw the, the efficient frontier trying to maximize theta which was basically also equal to r bar q minus r f divided by sigma q. And that concept if you remember how you can take a point f and basically rotate it counterclockwise till you reach the point q that we did different uh, ways of how to draw the efficient frontier, those short selling being there, not there, not this concept. So, the capital market pricing line relates the expected rate of return of the efficient fund portfolio which is P to its standard deviation which is sigma P. So, basically it is um, uh, trying to bring you the or give you the information on how they are related and the base or the actual concept based on which you are trying to find out the relation is the return and risk for the market. Remember it does not important point remember this capital market or pricing line it does not show how the expected rate of return of an individual asset is related to its corresponding risk. It only gives you an idea of the efficient portfolio. Remember I have written the word P and I did mention when I was reading on the equation P quite a number of times because and, and saying that it is efficient because we are only trying to find out that given the market which obviously we will consider theoretically efficient, we will consider that how any other portfolio can be formed which mimics the market and is efficient. We are not talking about any other portfolio which is inefficient or something to do with the price of a particular asset. In case the asset is obviously uh, efficient pricing, then uh, if considering the portfolio has only one asset, we will consider that as the efficient pro portfolio and try to draw the capital market on the pricing line. So, this is important. So, this capital market line does not show the expected rate of return of an individual asset and it is related to corresponding risk. So, it does not give us any information of R i and sigma i. Even though I did mention few seconds back that theoretically if a particular asset is efficient considering that is in the portfolio you can draw some idea about the efficient so called uh, portfolio considering only one asset. But technically we will desist from this and consider the idea about an efficient portfolio only n number of such assets which are there. So, con continuing the discussion of the capital asset pricing model, if the market portfolio M is efficient, then the expected. So, I did mention we will consider the market to be efficient and later on relax that also. So, considering the market M uh, portfolio M is efficient, then the expected rate of return for any efficient portfolio will always be given by this same formula. We have discussed that we are trying to basically discuss that again. So, this is excess return R p minus R f 
and if you consider divided by sigma we already had this r p i am considering is an efficient one so let me write down r p comma e e being efficient minus r f divided by sigma p comma portfolio being efficient that is equal to r bar the market minus value rf which is the excess return sigma m so this was the case now what you do is that if you remember i very very subtly at one point of time said that rather than use the sigma you can use the beta also as the risk measure let us do that so before i do that we know that beta is basically the tan so technically the beta value for the actually the market you can guess the value and based on that we are trying to de, de, draw the conclusion and for this model which is given here so the beta value if it is the market the value is already known based on that we are trying to do so if i take the ratio rf minus uh, rp minus rf p being efficient divided by beta p of the efficient portfolio so that comes on the left hand side on the right hand side is r r bar m minus rf which is there in the numerator and the denominator actually should be 1 so that should give you and the idea that what is the value of beta m which is the market value of beta or if i have a portfolio uh, which exactly mimics the market then we know what its value is now let us replace this value of beta with the corresponding the formula which i have used which was the relation between the covariance of the ith asset with the market and the variance of the market itself so the left hand side remain the same and the right hand side i basically replace beta p with the concept where in the numerator it basically sigma ij which is basically covariance of p which is efficient portfolio which is efficient along with m which is the market and in the denominator so this is what actually is the numerator is this here and what is the denominator it is basically is the covariance of m to m which actually boils down to sigma square m which is what is written here so there are different ways of trying to depict the formula the first one let us consider can be this the second way of so here the formulas look uh, very innocuous harmless very nice but there is a subtle change is happening in the formula in the first one the risk the concept of risk is only standard deviation in the second one the concept of risk is not standard deviation standard deviation is taken out we consider beta in the third case rather than beta we are trying to replace with the covariance concepts so there are different connotations of risk in the same formulation and all of them convey the same concept about the capm model or the concept of capital line we will see in few of the diagrams later on second one is where beta and the third one is concept where it's the covariance concept so there are different flavors which are being considered but all of them are trying to give you the same information same idea that there is one return concept return and there is there are different concepts of risk and you will see in many of the books the the risk concept in finance can be basically painted the, the picture can be drawn in different colors in different nuances 
you can have the concept of standard deviation, beta, the concept of uh, value at risk can be there. So, what I am saying is basically just for information, there can be value at risk, conditional value at risk, expected regret, all these ideas are considered as a measure of risk and why they are done that we will discuss that when we come to the next course related to more which uh, uh, will be delivered later on which is the idea about uh, financial risk. So, what is beta? As I was saying beta is the normalized version of the covariance of the assets. So, th if you consider beta it was basically a covariance of P efficient portfolio efficient with market market is also efficient we are considering remember we are considering market is efficient even though I did mention uh, in, in, in the last 10-15 minutes that it can be market can be inefficient also we will see that. So, beta is the normalized version of the covariance of the asset with the market portfolio hence we can say that the CAPAM formulation states that the expected excess re return of an asset is directly proportional to its co covariance with the market because beta was equal to sigma p e m divided by covariance of market to itself which is the covariance in the market. So, is basically it is the covariance that determines the expected excess return of the uh, return and CAPAM changes our concept of the risk as I have been mentioning quite, quite a few number of times during the lecture today or uh, in, the, in the last lecture uh, in the 11th and the 12th one that we are slowly replacing the concept of risk uh, from sigma to beta. Now, we will basically uh, consider the concept of a security market line. So, we have considered the capital asset pricing model, the capital li uh, line and based on that we found out the ratios. Now, we will consider a, a security market line and what is that? The CAPM can be expressed in a graphical form by regarding the formula as a linear relationship. Yes, it was a linear relationship, ratio of excess return of the efficient front portfolio divided by its standard deviation will be equal to the market excess return of over the RF value divided by the market risk and then we replaced by beta and went on discussing. So, this relationship when it is a linear relationship is termed as the security market line and it will be discussed in the following slides. Now, the line looks exactly like the capital cap -M model but note down one important thing. So, here is the important the fact that what we are going to depict on the x axis time and again it will change the picture will change, but as it changes it will look the exactly the same, but pay attention to the x what if what we are measuring in the x axis or our y axis remain the same it is r bar whether efficient or the portfolio that will become context specific. So, here we are denoting covariance of the portfolio of the asset with respect to the market and we have the straight line as it is point F is here, point M is here. Now, very interestingly if I consider this point, consider this point is say for example, M dash. So, it at M dash it will be covariance of R m with respect to itself. So, that will be equal to sigma square m. So, actually what we are measuring along the x axis is basically the covariance. So, let me use a different color. So, we are measuring covariance concept and this is basically R R m. So, at the point m it becomes equal to the variance of the market. So, if you, if I consider the idea here exactly the same idea and I am writing the formulas again sorry for the repetition, but please bear with me R i minus R p epsilon sorry minus R f there is a bar here sigma p e is equal to r bar m minus r f 
by sigma m that was there when we had m as the market y axis remains same x axis is only denoting the standard deviation. Then we saw this was basically 1. In the second case which is here we had this. beta and then this we in the third formula we saw this was the case. So, I am I am not going into writing the denominator I am just putting it on the right hand side it will be sigma uh, let me write it covariance rather than sigma covariance of by covariance of m to m. So, that was basically the concept of beta multiply this is the multiplication sign with R m minus R f. So, uh, even though it has been noted down uh, very intently in the last slide, but I thought I will mention that. So, these are the different flavors which are going to bring it using the capital line, the security market line, so on and so forth. So, before I go to this la uh, the sli next slide, again I am repeating when I started this slide, please pay attention to the x axis. Now, security market line again looks the same, but again pay attention here rather than sigma, rather than covariance, now I am denoting beta as the risk measure. So, uh, also I have y as r bar again the same thing theta. So, those equations 1, 2, 3 will hold and again remember here at this point the value of beta would be 1. So, I am measuring beta here this is theta the height will be given by R m minus R f divided by the base. So, so, if there was which I should have drawn in the other two diagrams, but I am drawing it here because whatever I, I am drawing here would have been applicable to the other way of de depiction of this graph. So, let me write these first three again they remain the same the first one is this equation r p e portfolio efficient minus r f divided by standard deviation portfolio efficient is equal to r m bar minus r f by sigma m the second formulation r bar portfolio efficient minus r f by beta p efficient is equal to r m minus r f divided by 1 and we will be discussing this in this graph. The other would have been discussed later on. So, I will just have patience I will just highlight that considering the space constraint I will still try to do that. And the third one was portfolio efficient bar value is always the average value R f is equal to I am taking that concept of risk to the right hand side. It is covariance of portfolio efficient and the market divided by covariance of the market to itself which is uh, the standard deviation multiplied by this this is average value sorry. So, I have highlighted it green why I will come to that. So, consider this is one point which is the portfolio which is efficient. So, if I consider extension of this triangle. So, using the concept of simple uh, 
geometry similar triangles. So, consider the triangles this point being F, this point being M, this point being P E and consider this point is say for example, X and this point being Y. So, if I have from, from this two, two triangles which is F M Y and F P E X, the ratio would be always this ratio will always be true. R bar M minus R F divided by beta which is 1. So, I am, I am uh, let me write beta M that will equal to R bar P E minus R F divided by beta P E this is exactly here because this value we know would be 1 and we get that formula. Now, technically uh, let me go back to this part first. So, so, I should have done that, but in the flow of the discussion I just completely skipped it. My apologies for that. This one which, which I am marking in blue. So, let us go back to slide number 18. This one. So, if you see this is this the equation which we are going to discuss now, which was already written here. So, if you see the ratios again a point of P, E, this is say for example, x, this is y and this is theta. So, if I consider the formula for the uh, triangle F M Y. If I consider F M Y the covariance of wait yes covariance of M with itself that is height by base will be equal to R P E minus R F divided by covariance of P E M. P e is the portfolio which is efficient. So, let, let us see whether this we have already seen. Yes, we have already seen this is here already. So, only a change of the x axis is giving us a different flavor. While this one again in the flow I did miss it, let me mark it here. The first part, first formula. So, let us go back to the slide which is here. Yeah, this would be the case. So, if I consider efficient one and consider this is x, this is y. So, considering the height to the base for these two triangles, what are the triangles f q or f m y not q m f m y and f p e x. So, the ratio is being same which is r m bar minus r f divided by again. So, when I am mentioning the x axis see the the ratio the denominator is changing each time sigma m efficient p is efficient and excess return of the portfolio which is efficient over r f divided by sigma p. So, if you see this, this is exactly the one which we had here. So, in the diagrams if you see, let uh, me use the red color yes, diagram if you see the notation what we measure in the y axis remains the same, 
in the x axis it is beta or sigma or covariance concept of the portfolio efficient with respect to the market. So, these three give you three different flavors of the problem from the same concept. In both the graphs, we have different variables in the x axis. This is what I would have been mentioning. Remember, the essence of CAPAM emphasizes that any asset or a portfolio should fall on the security market line, considering it is efficient. Thus, this line expresses the risk reward structure of an asset or portfolio according to the CAPAM and emphasizes that the risk of an asset portfolio is a function of its covariance with the market or equivalent of function of the beta. So, in the x axis we are measuring sigma, I am not writing the suffix, it is basically of p, it is beta p and p will change and another case is basically the covariance of p with the market. So, equivalent is a function of its beta and also it will basically give us the idea of the risk in three different ways. Now, we know the systematic risk. So, if you remember there were two risks diversifiable risk and non diversifiable risk, systematic risk, non systematic risk, market risk, non market risk. So, one could be diversified, another could not. One risk is coming from the market, another risk is coming from the white noise. We know the systematic risk and the non systematic risk. So, systematic risk is this, non systematic risk was given by this. The systematic risk is the risk associated with the market and cannot be reduced with diversification while the non systematic risk can be made 0 if I consider because it is actually for the portfolio will be multiplied by w i square into sigma square epsilon and if I increase the number of, of assets and I, and I invest one nth uh, in each that means w i is equal to 1 by n. So, as n increases w i square becomes 1 by n square which can be made in the long run with a large sample size of of uh, in the portfolio can be made 0. So, the part related to the risk coming from the white noise can be made 0, while the part coming from the market risk value that cannot be made 0 that remains. It, it, it says here the risk associated with the market cannot be reduced, cannot be reduced with diversification while the risk non-systematic risk can be made 0 with diversification. So, this is the part which can be made 0 and this is the part which cannot be made 0. Consider an asset on the capital market line and in that case it would be an efficient portfolio which is formulated. PAE that is the efficient portfolio which is formed by the investing some proportions in the market portfolio and the rest in the risk free interest rate. Yes, this is an important point. So, if you drew a new uh, or if you have seen I was drawing PE at somewhere away from M, it can be either on the lower side or it can be higher up the straight line. Yes, that is very intuitive because if I consider the diagram, so here you have the x, y axis, x axis, this is f and this is q, say for example q and my actual efficient frontier without uh, the risk free interest rate is this, while my efficient frontier with the risk free interest rate is this and short selling being there. This is the basically the essence of the capital mar market line whatever you are drawing, security line. Now, this was m, this was f. Now, where I formulate p is immaterial, I can have p here also, I can have p here also, p means p e portfolio which is efficient. So, this can be the first instance, this can be the second instance, so on and so forth. So, if I consider p e, 
2 it means that I am investing based on, on say for example P e is at the midpoint of F and M which means I am investing 50 percent of my money in the market and 50 percent of, of the money I am investing in the bank. If I am say for example twice the distance, so the distance between M and F whatever it is and P e 1 is on the same length from M but on the other hand which means I will be short selling twice that amount that means I am going to the bank, I had 100 rupees, I take out another 100 rupees and invest that total amount in that market. So, 100 was also there plus another 100 is there. So, this is the concept of short selling that means borrowing from the bank and obviously we are considering that riskless lending borrowing whatever it is, it is a fixed value. It would not change the concept of discussing discussion what I am having now, it would not change that basic idea. Similarly, P e 1, so in that case I will basically have 100 from my own pocket plus 100 from short selling or borrowing from the bank. So, consider an asset on the capital line and in that case it would be an efficient portfolio which is formed by investing some proportion important in the market and the rest in the risk free interest rate. So, here the concept which I have been talking about for P e 2 would be 50 percent, 50 percent and for P e v 1 it will be 200 percent and 100 percent being taken from the bank. So, we will formulate it accordingly and it can be if it is say for example, 3 fourth of the distance from uh, from F towards M. So, we will basically invest accordingly 3 fourth, 1 fourth. If it is more towards F, we will invest <coughs> more in F and less in M. If it is exactly at F, that means we have invested all our money into the bank. If it is exactly at M, we have invested all our money in the market security. So, different ideas can be formulated here. So, if non-systematic risk is 0, then the proportion portfolio is exactly on the capital market line. Yes, this is important. Now, we are slowly considering the market if it is inefficient, we will come to that. If which is important, let me highlight it. If non-systematic risk is 0, then the portfolio is exact, portfolio means P is on the capital market line. So, more the non-systematic risk greater is the shift towards the right that means it will be going on to the right here. How it is done? I will come to that. So, if you are seeing that the portion which is highlighted, so if non-systematic risk is 0 then the capital portfolio is exactly on the capital line, more it is it will be on the right. If you remember there were two types of risk, one was market risk which cannot be made 0 and non-market market risk coming from the noise which can be made 0 because W i square which is the multiplicative factor with sigma square epsilon, if W i is 1 by n it can be 1 by n square and n increases it can be made 0. So, let us see the portion which is highlighted. So, if you consider the line, so we had this line was the efficient portfolio, consider you had M here market, you could have P e 1 here, 1 means different combinations being done, P e 2 here where P e 1, P e 2 is basically portfolio efficient 1, 2 depending on the proportions and this is F. Now, white noise is there, so it means any point so, consider this is P e 3, another portfolio is efficient, but on the right hand side with systematic risk only. So, as it goes on to the right, so that means it falls below the efficient frontier. So, consider this is the one, I should use a different color. So, this is which is P e 3 1, subscript 1. So, here P 3 1 will have 
some amount of systematic risk which is SR plus some amount of non systematic risk which is NSR. Consider the amount of non systematic risk is very high. So, this will be P E 3 suffix 2 and similarly if if the value of non systematic risk is higher it will be P E 3 suffix 3. So, similarly I can have with the same logic a horizontal line like this horizontal line, line for the market for P E 2 then the corresponding points would be say for example, m suffix 1, m suffix 2 and that would make sense because the amount of so called market noises. This m I am drawn in order to just bring a semblance what I have drawn P 1, P 2, P E 3 1, P E 3 2, P E 3 and if I draw this horizontal one which is for P E 2, you can have P E 2 suffix 1, P E 2 suffix 2 and so on and so forth. So, higher you go on to the right, the portfolio actual non systematic risk increases. So, with this I will end the, the 13th lecture and considering the concept of uh, cap -M model has been discussed in brief details with the concept, we will wrap it up in the 14th class and continue discussing more about uh, the APT and the concept of how multi-index model can be utilized. Have a nice day and thank you very much.